Hello, this work on approximate differential rendering is by Leon Kesselman, Marshall Hebert. We are affiliated with the Robotics Institute and the School of Computer Science at Carnegie Mellon University. In analysis by synthesis, you have a renderer that can produce images, and you are given a target image which you would like to have match. This is done by minimizing a loss function that measures the difference between the two images. In differential rendering, this is augmented so your renderer can produce gradients that can aid the optimization process. Our contribution is to build an approximate renderer that is still very fast, but whose gradients are reliable enough for classic computer vision tasks. For example, in this case, we perform object reconstruction using shape from silhouette. The optimization is very fast, using less than a minute of CPU time, and is robust to artifacts in the input masks. Our differential render uses implicit surfaces, and our experiments focus on shape, not color. This allows us to use very low degree of freedom and very fast reconstructions. For example, this shape from silhouette is performed in real time on a laptop GPU. Our renderer is enabled by using fuzzy metaballs, an extension of metaballs where the surface definition is fuzzy, defined only by where our renderer terminates rays. You can see examples of depth, alpha, and normals produced by our renderer below. The basic structure of our render is to intersect each Gaussian independently and then smoothly combine all intersections, and only afterwards filter out poor quality intersections. We derive three different ways of intersecting Gaussians that maximize various properties about the surface, including one approximation. You can see what all three look like here. Of note, for every method, for every ray, for every Gaussian, there is always a well-defined intersection. We then combine multiple hits using a weighted average. This is similar to order-independent transparency. Our weights prioritize high-quality hits that are close to the camera, with a hyperparameter to control the impact of each. Here's examples of what the blended arrays look like in the prior 2D example. In 3D, all methods are also implementable, but we prefer the linear one because of its numerical stability and speed. Overall, this renderer ends up being 7 times faster in forward passes and 30 times faster in backward passes compared to an implementation of a differentiable mesh render in PyTorch 3D. We do experiments with pose estimation, trying to refine the pose of objects given perturbations. We measure the error as a geometric mean of rotation and translation error, and we compare against several baselines. We additionally perform experiments both with a noise-free and a noisy version of the data. The initialization has an error of about 20, and the mesh render has an error of about 17. Classic methods actually perform better, getting an error of about 8, with the same amount of points. Giving classic methods far more points lowers the error to about 6 to 7. However, fuzzy metaballs with a very low degree of freedom is able to get an error of about 4. We also perform experiments in shape from silhouette, for example, this example as we saw before. And we perform comparisons for this for several objects. On the left is our estimated depth map, and the right is the ground truth. In many cases, these are similar, even though we use a very low degree of freedom implementation. Compared to other baselines, such as voxel carving, other differential renders, or even nerf, our method has very good performance. Only nerf outperforms us, despite it requiring 100 times more compute. We also perform experiments with perturbed silhouettes, where we are actually the best performer, and still the fastest. We also try these on real video sequences. For example, here's a cell phone video. It's possible to extract poses using call map and masks using mask RCNN. We then can perform a reconstruction using our differentiable render. The reconstructions can obtain masks and depth maps from the sequence. Of note, some of the ground truth have artifacts. Some frames are under-segmented, while other frames are over-segmented. We still use this as ground truth, and our differential render is able to recover good masks in both cases. That is because the low degree of freedom provides an implicit regularization. We can then run this on multiple sequences, such as these from Co3D, where we reconstruct fire hydrants, motorcycles, and several stuffed animals. Oh, and a bicycle. <laughs> In conclusion, we build the differentiable approximate render and focus on its utility and vision tasks. It is fast, robust, and finds high-quality results. Thank you.